let's talk about Daniel Craig first. And then I want to talk about elements of the saga. Cause there's definitely some things that I thought were kind of were, were I'm, I'm big on the term whiff today, but there are definitely a few whiffs in, in these five movies that I look back and feel like it was kind of a missed opportunity, but Daniel Craig was not one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, if you haven't watched the documentary here in Canada, it's on Crave TV. I'm not sure. I'm sure it's on like, uh, I don't know what it's on. In Probably the, Hulu. I would Hulu or something. or something like that. I'll let, you, there, I'll let you know. Yeah. There's a, there's a great, <laughs> there's a great documentary um, about Daniel Craig that was released um, in tandem with no time to die that I actually watched today. And it's called becoming bond. And it sort of takes you through his journey of mm. when he was first cast and the uproar that went on. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember how upset it well. people were just the mm-hmm. fact that he was blonde, the fact that he wasn't perceived as a leading man, the fact that he's short, the fact, and it's like British press are pretty, pretty Intense. savage with this sort of thing. And yeah, he just, and towards the end, you know, in Pierce Brosnan's last film, you know, we're driving around an invisible car um oh pierce yeah like they're wa- he's- they're, and then he's water skiing on the <laughs> yeah, yeah on the no, fake looking wave of all time kelly yeah. kelly he's not water skiing he's like para surfing yes. like he's like yeah. surfing yes. with a parachute when it's um, like little hairs are like barely moving and it's yeah, like and oh it's, no it, it, so it's like so it, the franchise needed to be rebooted. And I think all of us are in agreement that if you're going to look at um, the five Craig Bond movies, Casino Royale is the best one. Mm-hmm. It has the best story. Um, mm-hmm. Great villain. Um, they did away. That was one where there were, there's like no Bond tropes in that at all. Like aside from uh, him saying yeah. Bond, James Bond at the end of the movie, there's no like, there's no theme song. There's no nothing. You right? learn about his, the backstory of the shaken, not stirred. That might be the only other one. Right. And so Remember? I think, and yeah. I think what yeah. he brought to the role was physicality and just this kind of rugged, like masculinity in that, like, he's obviously still a very good looking man, looks great in a suit, can deliver all the one liners, but like, you believe that when that dude starts throwing hands that he's yeah. like formidable, right? Oh Yeah. And I think like, I, I think that is what hits for everyone with him. And you quickly, for those people who were upset about him being blonde hair, blue eyed, all you need to do is watch that opening scene from Casino Royale, where he's fighting the guy in the washroom stall. And right away, you're like, eh, we're good. We're good. In. Yeah. This in. is going to be fine. This is going to be Two minutes fine. in. Yeah. yeah. So Brad, I'm going to throw to you first and just give me your thoughts overall on Daniel Craig, his tenure specifically as... 007. Yeah, I mean, I think it's obvious based on my ravings from earlier in this episode, but uh, he's the greatest Bond of all time. All due respect to all the previous Bonds, we, especially in my household, like most people's dads are huge Bond fans, so you grow up a Bond fan, and, you know, growing up with like the Sean Connerys and the Pierce Brosnans. And like, those were kind of my two guys that I kind of latched onto because one was the OG and one was like the one from like the early nineties when we were kids. But like I said earlier in the episode, when I saw Casino Royale for the first time after like the silliness of the last, you know, Pierce Brosnan performance and everything else, no disrespect. I love Pierce Brosnan, but uh, it was like a real Holy shit moment. Like, this is a guy we haven't seen before. This is a bond that I believe is what exactly to your point, Rob, like somebody who I can actually really see in a hand to hand physical fight and has all the other things to back it up, but the suave, the cool, the yeah. badass. And I remember, I remember very, very well when he got cast and I wasn't one of the people ranting and raving because I just didn't really know who he was at the time. I was fairly young, just didn't wasn't quite aware of his previous work. But I was like, what the hell is everybody freaking out about? Like, give him, like, give the guy a shot. Because I remember when things like this happen, when it the character means so much to so many people. Like when Heath Ledger got cast as Joker, everybody lost their flipping mind, like thought it was going to be the end of all things batman or whatever but this i just remember very much like the heath ledger performance it was like two minutes in and you're like "Mm -hmm, mm-hmm and that guy just came out 
performed his ass off, did all the physical work, did hit all the emotional beats. He's, uh, I, I don't, I don't know who's going to fill those shoes next, but they got some big ass shoes to fill. And I, like I said, I just think between all the different films, Casino Royale still being my favorite as well. Quantum of Solace was really the only one where I really was kind of like, the rest, I, again, I don't really have, I really didn't have that same kind of visceral reaction to even like Spectre. I just kind of, I loved that it was like dark and gritty and it still had all those kind of things that we had come to expect from like the Daniel Craig era movies and especially having a through line story that we never really got before to me was revolutionary. Yeah. No, you're just supposed to think that Pierce Brosnan and Sean Connery were the same guy. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) One wore a wig because he was already bald and the other guy actually had a full head of hair. But regardless of that, uh, it was, it was something that I felt the series of bond as a whole needed so bad because they, everyone knew that it had gone down this path of like, okay, it's silly. This is a different generation now. What are we, what are we gonna do different while still staying somewhat in the vein of Bond so this doesn't just feel like any action flick. And I feel like we have gotten this progression through all the different movies for better or worse. Some of the ones that people didn't like, some of the ones they do, whatever, whatever. I just think that this is something that's gonna be very hard to top. And I'm excited to see who gets brought out of the gates next because it seems like forever ago when Daniel Craig was rolled out as the new Bond. So I'm excited for when that time comes. But as of right now, I'm just like, let's just let it breathe. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful thing in film. And uh, I can't say enough about it. Got the big lump in my throat, Kelly. I wish I I had had a blanket (laughs) as well because I was doing the full, like, (laughs) oh, I'm fine. (laughs) Come on, man. Keep it together. Uh, But go ahead. Yeah. Kelly, your thoughts on uh, your thoughts on Daniel Craig's tenure as James Bond. Yeah. I mean, you guys have kind of said it all. Uh, I don't have too much to add. I, you know, I, I would rank the movies in a similar way. Casino Royale being my favorite Skyfall coming in second. Then the other ones kind of jumbled together. Um, It's interesting just to kind of look at the way that movies changed in that 2005, 2006 era, because that's like when Batman Begins came out as well. And so these are movies that like, the, the, the predecessor was just so silly. And it was like in 2005, 2004, they just kind of were like, we got to smarten up here, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got to start taking this seriously. We're wrecking this. And that's what they did. And so, uh, yeah, like it's, it was a, it was a much needed reinvigoration for the character. They brought in the right guy, despite the controversy, they did the right thing. And then the only other thing I'll say about it is a few years ago, I had the opportunity, they do it here in Toronto. Uh, you can go to Roy Thompson Hall and you pay to watch a movie and have a live orchestra play oh, the score. And I saw Casino Royale in that environment. And my God, did it make me love that movie mm-hmm. so much more because not only do you have the live music around you, but then you've also got the audience cheering every time he, you know, does one of his badass James Bondism. So uh that that's just a highlight of like me going to the movies in general so I have such a fondness for that movie and this character just because of that experience as well so yeah um so I want to talk about oh by the way when they did cast Daniel Craig I did it was a head scratching moment for me not because I was upset or anything but because I was like the guy from Tomb Raider yeah yeah that's oh my god guy. that was yeah, yeah. yeah. like yeah. I'm, I, we, I could easily go on to his filmography to see what he did first but i was at that time i was like i don't really he that looked was, familiar to me but i was like i don't really know who this that is that was my only point of reference i was like the guy from the angelina jolie <laughs> tomb raider movies <laughs> that wow, are currently yeah. available at my local grocery store for $1.99 um, oh sure yeah yeah in yeah the bin. in the bin um <laughs> so i think th- the Craig saga w- was not without its flaws. And I-, I wanted to point some of those out because I think there's lessons that can be taken as we go forward with this new bond. One of the things that um, the thing with this one is it was a clean, as you guys have both touched on, it was a clean sort of break and it was like a reboot. And it was like, we're going to mm-hmm. start from scratch here. We're going to forget mm-hmm. all the stuff that's happened. It was a through storyline through five movies. Um, 
to me, I think, honestly, I think part of the issue was the highs in this are so high yes. that it's almost hard to top, right? So it's like yes. you have Casino Royale that which top to bottom is, in my opinion, and I, based on what I've heard you two say so far, is the best Bond movie ever made, in my, in my personal opinion. Great. Easily. And that's yeah. a movie where you have uh mads mickelson playing la chifra and he's excellent in that like to me i thought it was like highs and lows with villains right and and mm. this is because we already talked about rami malik all right and we think yeah. that the issue with rami is that he just wasn't given enough to work with which is true then you have um javier bardem's silva which so. was excellent like oh, completely excellent. Like I, ju- like, I, Adam- I just watched that movie like before we hopped on here. Yes. Oh, yeah. We'll go so down. Good. We'll oh. go down as as probably the greatest Bond villain of all time. Mm-hmm. Then you have, in my opinion, I gotta be honest with you guys. Like I, I wanted to touch on this, and even though this is like a pretty like rosy like review of of the Daniel Craig Bond saga, Ernst Stavro Blofeld is James Bond's arch nemesis from back to the original Ian Fleming books. He's the character that they based Dr. Evil on. Yes. Uh, like, yes. Yes. so it's like he, his, he was in, he was in a bunch of the original Connery movies and whatever. <laughs> so when, when they cast Christoph Waltz in that character, it was like, this is a home run. Like you instantly yeah. think mm-hmm. of like his character in Inglorious Bastards. And you're yes. like, oh my God, this guy's perfect. Like he's going to be awesome. And that movie, which I learned today in watching this uh, um, Becoming Bond documentary, part of the issue with that movie is Daniel Craig broke his leg and then they kept filming. So he's wearing like oh. a giant, like, brace all the way up his leg during a lot of the scenes in that movie so they had to change had no idea i highly 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 recommend i highly 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 recommend um watching this it's it's so it's enlightening yeah for the two the two movies in the the craig saga that are kind of like meh it's really enlightening i'll talk about quantum in a second um but to me I, i just think that they because overall specter wasn't I think it, I think it was partially like it was following Skyfall and Javier Bardem's epic performance in that. So it's like, mm-hmm. you're trying to follow up with a character. Like we keep referencing the dark Knight trilogy here. Right. And, and Chris Nolan, but it's like, you had Heath Ledger's epic performance as the Joker. Then you come back for dark Knight rises and you have Tom Hardy as Bane which is like totally different villains. So you're not necessarily automatically comparing him to, mm-hmm. um, to the previous Heath Ledger's yeah. Joker. Yeah. So yeah. I think, whereas like a Bond villain is a Bond villain. It's like most Bond villains are not like overly physical. Like they're like kind of evil masterminds who sit at with the, their henchmen you know, big, and... in a big chair yes. at the end of the table. And, <laughs> and it was also like Skyfall. We kind of got away from if, Casino Royale and Quantum, they're they're alluding to Spectre a lot, right? There's this yes, e- there's this yes. terrorist organization. Skyfall, we kind of get away from that. And yeah. it's mm-hmm. Silva is like going after M and he has a vendetta with Judy Dench's M and what yeah. she did mm-hmm. to him. And then in Spectre, it's like, oh yeah, we started this storyline two movies ago. We need yeah. to kind of bring it back. And then they kind of like like water that's, down. Yeah, Silva. that's my biggest yeah. gripe. That's my biggest gripe is that. Yeah. Uh, skyfall yeah. it was so good and then they're like ah, he was working for us too and i'm like yeah no, no. which yeah, takes away yeah. i just i get it i get it but i just think it didn't it, it it was i don't know if it was timing i don't know if it was similarity i don't know if it was like i said abandoning a storyline um and then coming back to it and sort of having to like force feed it all back in but i just mm-hmm. to me when i look back at these five movies the one the thing that I look at and go, ah, oh, just didn't didn't hit as hard as it could have was Christoph Waltz, um, Blofeld, and it has nothing to do with him. He's amazing. I just think the character itself didn't was not put on the pedestal that it should have been for whatever reason. I will say too that the the way in which Blofeld essentially dies in this movie too, that yeah. did that. I will say that did leave me a little bit flat. Yeah. That left me a little bit flat because it was almost just, 
like an accident. Well, I, think, <laughs> I mean, essentially I think, it was. Yeah, yeah. I think that was their attempt to be like, Rami Malek's character, Safin, is is way, you know, more to be feared and stuff. But yeah. that, I guess, you know, to, to go back with my some of my issues with this movie, is I, I, there was almost part of me that thought, if you've established that there's this, um, you know, way for uh, Blofeld to see into the world with that like mechanical eye, it's, why not have him just continue to be the bad guy, you know, like and have like that yeah. feud continue? I, I didn't feel we needed to introduce like another entity. I actually would have liked to maybe have seen this because if we built up Spectre over these last few movies, yes. maybe have the swan song go out with the feud between Bond and Spectre like that. That's, that's especially probably... after you alluded to them being like stepbrothers in Spectre. E- exactly, yes. right? Yeah. So I, yes. you've, you've built up this dynamic that's really, and like you see how mad he gets in like, you know, that borderline like interrogation scene and he's like, just die. <laughs> and I'm, like, die. Yeah. I'm like, they hate each other. Like, this is good, right? Whereas mm-hmm. there's actually no connective thread between Safin and Bond other than that he's captured the boring wife or girlfriend. So uh, like, I just- <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, yeah, like I, that was another thing too, where I was like, I, I know why they, Rami Malek's an Oscar winner. So I get it. They were like, let's get him in here. Like we, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, I- I think I'm with you, Rob. I think they did Blofeld a little dirty in this uh, in That's this fair. in this series of movies. Um, Brad, your thoughts before I before you go though, I, we should give a a minor. We're talking villains here, so we should give a minor shout out to Dominic Green from Quantum, Correct. the yes. one of the most forgettable Bond villains yeah. of all time. Yeah, I mean he's got. I forgot his the name. Bottom. Yeah, I was just gonna say if you're asking me his name right now, there's gonna be a little bit of a, <laughs> oh, no. a but then, what does pause. that tell? Uh, what does that tell you though? Like it's yeah, just like no, that no. movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. I mean, Quantum. I've never. I, I there's been times where I've left though. Like I said, like I, when I left Quantum, I was a little like, Meh. but I like I never left feeling like what the f- was that? Like that was <laughs> horrible. Like it was like I never left like that. It was just always like. Like there was just maybe yeah. like some things I kind of w- wish they had done a little bit differently or like whatever. There is something to be said though for like keeping you on your toes and you know, like not, it, it might've been a little too easy to just kind of go like Blofeld breaks out of prison again. And it's like a whole yeah. thing. But I also would have been okay with it if it had happened. I would have been like, well, this is awesome too. Yeah. Uh, but so I guess when I, when I, when you really break it down, I mean, Le Chiffre was somebody right off the hop who was kind of like, dude cries blood. Like that's yeah, pretty, that's pretty spooky. Yeah, that's, cool. yeah. that's pretty that's cool. That's such a Bond thing. That's such yeah. a Bond villain thing. Yes, yes. And it was just the way he was so, I mean, Mads is just such a guy, like a, internalizes all his like creepiness or like things that he brings to the character and everything and just like the little dabbing of it and explaining why it does that it was just such like an interesting character and it was very subtle in a lot of ways which is not usually something you get out of a bond villain so i'm tempted to give him the edge but i'll also say to what we've already alluded to here is javier bardem's character is was one of the best chewing the scenery but not like over the top yeah. somehow like i don't even know how he did like i don't know how you can chew the scenery and also not feel like this is over the top like when he pulls the teeth out oh, of his yeah. mouth when he Look chewed the capsule your work mother mother yes <laughs> his so voice good. goes mother even has deeper. been very bad yes <laughs> <laughs> These oh okay, well these performances are so good as well guys very nice <laughs> well done are you um, casting me in the next one <laughs> you're in you're in can I ask yeah. one question to you guys because Rob mm. I know you're going to talk a little bit about the future of James Bond I want to ask one question because I was reading through some reviews that for people who've been watching James Bond since they were like like you know since like the 70s 80s people are upset that they that they killed him. Do you think that that was the right thing to do? Or do you think there was any other way that they could have ended this saga? Obviously there's the option of just let him keep going and we switch him out and whatever, or, you know, or does he ride off into the sunset with his daughter or do you have to kill him? 
No, because the character of James, Bond, I don't like, I, I thought it was perfect. Like, let's bookend mm-hmm. this Craig saga, as I've dubbed it. Let's bookend that and start fresh. The character of James Bond is not meant to spend his years being daddy. Like, <laughs> he's not. Papa can He's not meant me? to spend his years yeah. changing diapers. Although, he's, <laughs> she's a little old. She, yeah, so, she's yeah. five. Yeah. yeah, but like. The character is is like he's a badass secret agent who yeah. wouldn't ever be able to stop. So it's not it just I, it wouldn't I say agree. honestly I wouldn't like it if if it ended and it was just like here he is with his wife and daughter going off into retirement like no <laughs> well, also also too just the fact that they had kind of tr- like it, i mean the first movie they i think it is the opening scene the black and white scene in the bathroom where he says something i'm gonna mess this up a little bit but uh essentially alludes to the fact that double o's have a short life expectancy, expectancy yeah. yeah right and then at the end of a lot of these movies it was like he would try to have that you know life and he just kept getting sucked back in just when i think i'm out they pull me back in like, i'm gonna it's do like that i'm gonna do it again yeah. It's like Batman. He can't give it up. Like yeah. he can't, you know what I mean? Like he there's can't. no life beyond this. This is what I, it's like I do think I'm in I do total think... agreement that as as much as, you know, like I said, I was wringing out my blankie because I was very upset. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, they had to do it. They had to. Yeah. yeah. I do think, I do think, um, <laughs> well, I understand the point of that and why they did that. And it makes sense for this version of the character. I do think it did get a bit much in these five movies of like every time he's like, I'm out. Well, I'm leaving. I'm leaving MI6. <laughs> yeah, and they're, like, <laughs> yeah, and they're yeah. like, fine, leave. And then he's like, <laughs> I, I'd I'm like back. to request to have him reinstated at yeah, 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 007. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, yeah, I'm yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. like, no, you're not. I'm and back then they're like, resurrection. I'm back. Actually, from the yeah, dead. you are. You're yeah, I've got, now. I've, st- I've still got Q on speed dial every <laughs> it, time something happens. It did yeah, get too much. I so <laughs> I want to move on and talk about the next bomb. But before I do that, I want to just hit one little trivia fact on Quantum because someone who's going to watch this who loves that movie is going to be like, you didn't mention the real problems with Quantum. Oh. Did you know Quantum came out during the writer's strike and they started shooting that movie without a script? I do remember I rem- that. Yeah, this is ringing a bell. So the, again, that this is why- strike. I yeah. texted both you guys earlier and I said, watching this has made me lighten up on quantum a little bit because um, uh, Daniel Craig and Barbara Broccoli like fully admit like, yeah, that, that production was a disaster. Like we, mm. we literally started shooting without a script and we were writing as we go. So we'll give that, mm. we can cut that movie a bit of slack now. All right. Imagine having like a hundred million or whatever the cost of that movie was. I think that movie actually still has the biggest explosion in film history. The one that happens at the end. But that's got to be like at least a hundy mil uh, uh, production. Can you 230 imagine? 230 million. <laughs> 200. Imagine. Okay. Just winging just, it. Just pause. Just pause for a second. Imagine just <laughs> knowing you have $230 million and you're just like, well, we're going to have some crazy ass explosions and car flips and everything else. We don't know what anybody's saying though, or how this is going to play out, but you know, let's just roll with it. Yeah. But I also, I also remember when that writer strike happened, that writer strike took down a lot of good um, franchises, TV shows, a lot of different stuff. And Hollywood learned their lesson that they were like, well, we'll just go hire somebody else. And it's like, no, you're not. Barbara Broccoli literally says that the, the person who wrote it, wrote the script, turned it in, picked up their check, turned around, grabbed their picket sign and went out front. Like, yeah. yeah yeah wow so wow. so all right we'll give quantum we'll, for the we'll quantum fans quantum. for the quantum, yes. quantum. so we're